All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back for Chapter 7, Perfect Match. Familiar faces. You stand completely frozen, watching Nadia's shocked expression. Steve! Beside you, Damien leans close to whisper in your ears. I'll hang back so we don't cause a scene, or, you know, more of a scene than necessary. Good idea. You rest at Nadia's side, while Damien returns to his car. Steve! This is what you meant when you wrote you never wanted to hurt me? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, who are you? <gasps> That's rich. I'm the girl you stranded with a piss poor handwritten note. Fuck away, lady. <clears throat> Gary doesn't know you. She's related to the chef. All right. <laughs> His name's not Gary, lady. His name's Steve, and he owes me a goddamn explanation. You must have me mixed up with someone else. I don't know who you are. Leave. No. I won't ask you to again. No. I know it's you. Hey. Oh. Uh... Hang on, Nadia. Let's think this through. Uh, are you sure Steve doesn't have, like, a twin brother we don't know about? No, he wouldn't keep something like that from me. Oh, well, let's just calm down for a second. Use our heads. That's all I've done for the last few weeks, huh, dude? Look, enough is enough, okay? I I'm not the Steve guy. Just leave us alone. Gary walks away with his new girl without looking back. You're forced to drag Nadia to the car. Hey, Steve. That character you love in a battle of crowns? Yeah, he dies in season two finale. By beheading! So there. In the car, Nadia crosses her arms and refuses to look at you or Damien. The long silence is stifling. So, uh, that's it. You know, I usually charge a fee for this, but, uh, you know, your friends, so maybe half off, quarter off, <laughs> ten percent? I'll just keep going. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Nadia, are you just going to let him walk away? I have nothing else to say. Besides, I can't look at him without feeling like... Ah! Nothing. Whoa. Uh, oh. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Look, he's dropped his girl off, and that road leads to an empty alley. Maybe with some private time, we can press a little harder and get some useful info out of him. Some kind of closure could keep me from another night with the bulletin board. Ugly. But I just need time to process for now. And you, hot dude? Up for a little daylight interrogation? Yo, yeah. What? Play detective with you? Something like that? Uh, for sure. Yeah. Get answers by confronting Gary. <laughs> it's a weird font. He's not getting off the hook that easy. All right, then. Make sure to... But then again, maybe you could... Oh. There you go. And that's our cue to leave. <clears throat> <laughs> you and Damien walk side by side toward the alley Gary disappeared into. Got a plaid up your sleeve? Doesn't seem like a tough guy to crack. Good cop, bad cop should work. I thought people only did that in detective movies. Doesn't mean it doesn't work. 
Well, in that case, we'll both be bad cops. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> I'll try not to have too much fun. <laughs> you spot Gary calling someone on the phone. Without warning, you grab his collar and shove him to the nearest wall. Damn. Gong, gong. You should learn to lie a little better. Answer a question, and we'll let you leave in one piece. What, what makes you think I know more than what I did earlier? When you first ambushed me? Because you haven't met me. Who the hell are you? Damien cracks his knuckles menacingly. Yeah. The guy who's going to tear you to pieces if you don't cooperate. Fess up. Or that pretty face of yours won't be pretty much longer. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a little too much. Yes. A little too much. All right. So just fess up. Or that. Well, no, it's too late. I can't really go back on that now. No, no, no. I gotta go. I gotta go full tail now, dude. You're bluffing. You slam him against the wall one more time. <clears throat> Fine. Gary lands on the ground, brushing his shoulders roughly, and you see a mark on his right palm. Oh, that looks exactly like Steve's scar from the car accident. Gary, how'd you get that scar, dude? I got cuts and scrapes almost every day. I'd waste too much time keeping track of all of them. Liar! You got this in a car accident! I drive a bike. Now, if I see either of you or your crazy friend again, I'm calling the cops. Gary walks away, bumping you on purpose. You hear him whisper, freaks, as he stomps down the street. Wow. So, that scar means Steve and Gary are physically the same person. Which doesn't make sense at all. Regardless, that was excellent effort. For your first interrogation. Well, P.I. Damien is pretty cool too. Cooler than normal Damien, at least. If I knew you'd be this impressed, I'd have invited you to my stakeouts a long time ago. <laughs> Didn't say I was impressed. <laughs> a man can dream. <laughs> I want to know what was your first interrogation like? Oh man, it was not good. Really? You don't have to look that pleased. <laughs> Group of teenagers shoplifted half a store's luxury goods. We caught one kid, but he refused to give up his friends. Thought I could get him to soften up with a can of soda. And he used it to retaliate. He sprayed my favorite shirt, ruined my hair, laughed at me, and told me to piss off. Damn. My first day, too. Man. I hope there's footage of this immortalized somewhere. Yeah, the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> In the car, you update Nadia on what's happened. At least I know I haven't gone completely off the rails. We're really sorry, Nadia. I'm glad you two went. But I just feel so powerless. You know what would really help? Gary and his new girl being hit by a school bus. Not exactly. Ever gone to a self-defense class, Nadia? Nope. But now may actually be the perfect time. That's what I thought. I know a guy who teaches a class not too far from here. You should check it out. It'd be good for you to blow off some steam and get that extra dose of self-love. In light of everything, there's no harm in learning to protect yourself. Then you're coming with me, hot dude. I could use some fun, solid company. What about Damien? As if Damien and the word fun could coexist without the world imploding. Ah, what? Oh, funny. I've actually got a client meeting in a nearby neighborhood, but we'll drive back to New York together. By taking the self-defense class, Nadia will acquire fighting skills that may come in handy in the future. Totally. Possibly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Hot dude, keeping me sane since forever. Thank you. Happy to help. I'll call Brock and give him a heads up. 
try to go easy on him, you two. Yeah. Oh, don't count on it. We got a Brock. We have a Brock. Later that evening, you and Nadia enter an upscale training facility after following the directions Damon gave you. Ooh, cool place. Inside, people stretch and warm up in a room covered with mats. I'm glad you're here with me. Damien warned that this instructor could be a little intense. I'm sure he isn't that. Hey! Ah! Good boy! Ah! Sorry! <laughs> I tend to startle people a lot. <laughs> I've been told I have a naturally abrupt voice. <laughs> <laughs> Damien told me you two would be coming. Hot dude and naughty, right? <clears throat> yeah! He said it would be a way to blow off some steam. I've been growing through some emotional stuff, and I've been needing a way to chill. Chill? Self-defense is a matter of survival, not fun. Whoa. Brock <laughs> puts on a, yeah, a thick foam training suit, protecting him from the neck down, while giving him the silhouette of a round, squishy marshmallow man. Does this look like a laughing matter to you? Honestly? <laughs> no more chit chat. Class! Line up! You line up shoulder to shoulder with Nadia and the other students as she whispers to you. Yeesh! I think all I need to feel better is to see this guy get knocked on his butt! Silence in the dojo! Now, when confronting imminent danger, there are many effective targets the eyes, the throat, the groin. The in step, the solar plexus. Yeah. I will represent the imminent danger. Any volunteers to try and stop me? I guarantee you can't hurt me. What about you? Brock clumsily swings his heavily wrapped arm to point at Nadia. What? Me? No. Uh, hot dude? Wait, what? I can the class claps as Nadia nudges you forward. Sorry. You take your place on the mat. Suddenly, Brock waddles towards you at full speed. Imminent danger! Imminent danger! You gotta pick quickly. You prepare to strike. Oh, yeah. Damn. <laughs> you strike the thick foam collar protecting Brock's neck. Brock coughs, still trying to play it cool. That was <coughs> mildly effective, I suppose. Whoa, good one, hot dude! Boy, right, thank you. Brock composes himself. Don't underestimate your assailant. Danger can strike a second time. Brock rushes forward and wraps you in a tight, foamy bear hug. You are constrained! Think fast! You ball up your fist. Uh-oh. Uh, aim for the uh, no, no, of the, uh, of no. the leg here. Yeah. You whap Brock <laughs> on the leg to no effect. Time's up! The danger wins, you bastard. Alright, I get it. Oh. <laughs> Brock releases you. Just goes to show what happens when you don't take the danger seriously. <sighs> the crowd claps unenthusiastically. Hot dude, you've got this. Looks like we've got a second volunteer. I'm not even gonna fix that. I wanna hit you in the groin. Oh, who, me? Uh, sure. Nadia steps forward meekly. <laughs> Sometimes an attacker will clasp you from behind. In that instance, you must channel your survival instincts, lower your center of gravity, and flip your attacker using your hips as leverage. <laughs> Brock nods to two senior students who demonstrate a picture perfect hip throw. Whoa. You want me to do that? Your survival depends on it. Danger is upon you. Brock gets into place behind Nadia. She struggles half heartedly, trying in vain to budge Brock's weight. Is this uh, really necessary? <clears throat> Nadia, get angry. Think of. Gary's new girlfriend. Ah! 
all. She's not even that cute. Oh, a fire lights in Nadia's eyes, and she heaves forward, rolling Brock over her shoulder and slamming him to the mat with authority. Well, way to go, Nadia. Consider this danger neutralized. Poor Brock. <laughs> After an hour or so of drilling various techniques and pummeling Brock mercilessly, you and Nadia pack your things as the class wraps up. That was amazing! I learned so many things! I can break someone's nose now, or rupture someone's eardrums! I could hip throw the world! Okay, slow down, Ninja Warrior. That was so cathartic! I feel so powerful! But how do you feel about Steve? Oh, honestly, still concerned. But now I know I can do more than just sit around and worry. I can take back control of my life. Thanks so much for coming, hot dude. I can't tell you how much I needed this. My pleasure. As you leave, Brock bids you goodbye while nursing his shoulder with a giant ice pack. Thank you for coming. Be sure to refer a friend. Poor Brock. Oh. <laughs> the next day. Meet me in front of Eros in ten. Because <laughs> war <laughs> just come. Fine, so bossy. OMW. <laughs> you arrive in time to spot Damon walking out of Eros's front door. Hey, what's going on? He leads you away from the building, cutting straight to the chase. Out back, there's a door that leads to a loading dock. There's security patrolling every floor, cameras lining the hallways. Even key card IDs for all the employees. So you were in there doing what? Recon? Focus, hot dude. Why would a so-called matchmaking service need all that? Good question. Well, could have something. You know, I just met Hayden because of Eros. You're just being paranoid. The rumors are true, ladies and gents. Love is indeed blind. <laughs> Please, you've been skeptical about Eros from the moment Nadia mentioned it. Can you blame me? Look how it turned out for her. What about Hayden? What about her? If anything, I'd march in there and throw them one hell of a thank you party. You still haven't answered my first question. I want to get a sense of how Eros runs. Learn their office layout. See how that quiz works. The perfect match quiz? Why? Damon grabs the back of his neck and groans. I don't know. Curiosity? Maybe? And? They said, and I quote, I'm ineligible for a perfect match. Damien, what? Go. Well, they're idiots. I think you're great. Aww. Oh, I know. The wow. Never again am I playing the compassionate human card with you. I just don't understand why they'd reject you. Because I'm too skeptical. <laughs> Who knows? Seems my skeptical reputation precedes me. Guess I didn't make the exclusive cut. No, you're just too, like, not gullible. Gonna, yeah. You sure about that? Do with you. I yeah. hope so. I hope that's the case. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> that's totally why. Yeah. I'm too smart for them. That's what it is. You are for real, though. Of course, that's what it is. <laughs> Damien laughs, but it sounds somewhat hollow. I'm fine, hot dude. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah. He takes a deep breath as if to compose himself. Yeah, well, let's not waste time talking about this. Anyway, I'm about to head to a nearby pub for a drink. You're welcome to join me if you'd like. <laughs> Don't tell me. Archer and Hops. Nadia says that's where you go for some serious brooding time. 
Damn it, naughty girl. <laughs> Is it true? No. Wait, I mean... Yeah. yeah. But only come if you want to. Do you want me to? Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say yes if it was anyone else, but... Yes. I'd like that. Eh? Fine. Oh, second thought, screw you. No. <laughs> Shall we? You and Damien enter Archer and Hops. Chandeliers hang from the ceiling, and there are classy leather booths lying across the room. Damien leads you to the bar. Hey, back already, Nazario! What are you moping about this time? <laughs> no, not you too. The bartender laughs and pats Damien on the shoulder. A clear camaraderie between them. Hey, I'm Flint. Not sure if you remember me, but I was your waiter during brunch a few weeks... Yeah, you, it's fine. You did the same accent then. No, I, I did? I think so. No, I did something else. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Technical difficulties. Are. I'm pretty sure you did that accent. Okay. I'm Flynn. Not sure if you remember me, but I was your waiter during brunch a few weeks back, a few weeks ago. I'm doing an acting class lesson, so I'm working on my New York, if you know what I mean. Packed day, not allowed to chat up customers in that restaurant, all that jazz. <laughs> I remember. I'm hot, dude. You and Damien take your seats. So, any deep, dark secrets about Damien you're willing to share, Flynn? Uh -oh. Damien's eyes visibly widen for a second. Nope. Bartender's code of conduct. Though, you'd be more than welcome to pry if you can beat Damien at the Nazario Chug. Why? Why would you bring up the Nazario Chug? What's that? Flynn grabs a bottle of Bacardi from the middle shelf Two glasses and a slim deck of cards. Too dark and stormy's coming up. Damien sighs loudly. You take the top card. Black means dare, red means truth. If you fail or want to dodge your task, you drink according to the number on the card. I suggest not playing a game named after me. But seeing you do a few dares would make me feel better. Then I'll go first. You flip the top card and reveal five of diamonds, so red. Looks like truth. How are things going with Hayden? Hayden and I are really happy. We care about each other. Already a we now, huh? We have been spending a lot of time together. With the trip upstate, then the opera. I may need to properly bring this girl in for questioning then. Don't scare her off, Damien, at all. You think so little of me. <laughs> but I'm glad you're happy, Hop Dude. Your turn. Three of clubs and black means dare. You're going to make me embarrass myself, aren't you? Uh huh. Thoroughly. Sure. And how is that supposed to help? You'll see. I dare you to. No, don't do that. Show everything in your wallet. <laughs> Damien downs three hearty chugs. Damn. Are you serious? That's like the easiest dare. Agree to disagree. Did I or did I not make you smile? Just a little bit. No need to rub it in. On your turn, the top of the deck is... Oh, another dare. Uh-oh. Payback time. He scans the room for a second. See that woman over there? Da, da, da. There it is. I dare you to pretend you're her biggest fan and take a selfie with her. What? Oh, you're crazy. Why would I even say? Make something up. What about your professional acting skills? Damien urges you off the stool. You hesitantly approach the stranger. Wait, what does he do for a living? Hot dude. Please. 
Or, <clears throat> excuse me, are you Kalen Bolshikov? No, are you? Uh, oh, no. You glance at Damien. He's struggling to hold in his laughter. Anything else I can help you with? I was in the middle of a conversation. Oh, can I get a picture? You look a lot like the person I mentioned. Yeah. I guess. Thank you. You're welcome. You return to the bar. A moment of eye to eye with David. Then you both burst out laughing. <laughs> that made my night for some reason. Cheer up, mission complete. The two of you play a few more rounds, nearly finishing three quarters of the Bacardi together. Hey, you two. Damien's on his best behavior, I hope. You'd think. Oh. Flynn shuffles the cards and offers the deck to Damien, a mischievous look on his face. Damien reveals a queen of hearts and glares at Flynn. Seriously? Why? Is that like 12 mandatory tequila shots? Long? I'm afraid the card for that would read alcohol poisoning. Nah, it's a special draw. It can't be skipped. And the question must revolve around one's love life. You're welcome. Flynn refills your near-empty drinks and leaves you with a wink. So, are you judgmental about love? It's a job qualification, first and foremost. You don't progress in my industry by believing in fairy tales, or giving people the benefit of the doubt. That sounds lonely. Damien takes a sip of his drink. There's a fine line between lonely and alone. I think I've gotten pretty good at navigating the two. My last relationship was a crash and burn, with a few more intense variables added in. Meaning? She was my partner when I worked at NYPD. Fierce. Incredibly smart. Difficult, some would say. But she had a soft spot for me, and vice versa. We worked together for Interpol overseas, and it was good for a while. Then our case went south. I would shift back home, and she had a choice. Me or the job. I, uh, I really thought she'd choose me for a second. But I can't say I'm too disappointed, though. Since what Eros is selling would likely end up in alimony, palimony, <laughs> Me staking out strangers on a fire escape. Mm -hmm. Not for you, though, I hope. <laughs> nice save. Eros has got stats and science, but they don't know you, Damien. You're a good guy. An even better friend. You'll find the right person. Yeah, thanks, Hot Dude. Means a lot. Damien gazes into your eyes for a second. What? But then stands abruptly. It's getting late, but I'm uh, glad you came with me. Me too. Okay. Yeah, they're trying to leave that open. Not happening! <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. The next <laughs> minute, Hayden arrives at your apartment. Hey, sorry to drop by so early. I don't mind at all. A lot's happened. Actually, I'm glad to see you. You welcome Hayden inside, and she gives you a sweet kiss on the cheek as she enters. Sounds like you and Damien uncovered a lot. I'll make us some pick-me-ups, and you can tell me about it. Sure. I'll have my usual. Green tea with honey. Hayden emerges from the kitchen a couple minutes later with a mug in hand. Here you go. One green tea with honey. Thanks. The caffeine is definitely welcome. I'm going to make something for myself. Keep talking. Hayden heads back into the kitchen as you relay Damien's findings about Eros and Steve. It's weird, right? For Eros to have that level of security? Hayden returns from the kitchen with a second mug. 
I mean, a bit strange, but not out of the question. Lots of buildings in New York have advanced security. Hayden offers you the mug. One green tea with honey. We did that already. Oh! <laughs> I see. <laughs> um, Hayden, uh, are you feeling all right? Huh? Hayden notices your mug and cringes with embarrassment. Holy mother of crap. Crack? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making any jokes. You just have to keep going. That's it. Holy mother of crap. I completely spaced. I would facepalm so hard if I weren't holding a scalding hot liquid. <laughs> no worries. Happens to the best of us. Guess I needed this caffeine more than I realized. Hayden takes a seat next to you on the couch. This deep business has been stressing me out. Same. Hearing this, Hayden puts the mug down and places her hands on your shoulders, meeting deep circles. The relief is instant, and Hayden's touch sends soothing waves throughout your whole body. <laughs> oh, it still amazes me how good you are at this. Naturally, I aim to please. You know, there's another reason I came this morning. Sloan wanted me to invite you over tonight. Oh, really? Oh. Really, she's been talking about quality friendship time a lot, and is actually excited for a social function, which is uncharacteristic. Well, in that case, how can I say no? Later that night, you arrive at Sloan and Hayden's apartment. Hot dude, you're here. The invitation worked. Because, you know, <laughs> invitations don't always work. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, you send a paper one, yeah. and they get lost in the mail. I hate what that happens. And sometimes you send, like, an electronic one, and it goes to the, the spam box. For sure, box. that's what happens. Yeah. And sometimes you send an e-vite. Mm -hmm. The people don't read e bites anymore. No, they it's don't. Too, too old. TLDR, that's what it yes. is. It did. It did. Thanks for having me. Please, come in. You'll notice the easy listening, adult contemporary music <laughs> I've streamed from the internet. Oh my god. Okay, I'm just wondering are they trying to pawn her off on me? Is that the deal? I is don't that, know. Because it is not working. <laughs> this is a this is a failure. I'm just, no. But it's just so sweet. <laughs> Hayden approaches smiling. Yes, we've spared no expense. Without a word, Hayden leans in and gives you a kiss on the cheek and a sly smirk. Oh. Board games will start in one hour. Oh. I've also taken the liberty of making hors de bois. Oh. That's French. Because oh. they use too many letters in their words. Oh. For no reason. Sure. Anyway, yeah. recipe from an online pen board. Oh. Full disclosure, I later realized they were appetizers meant for a baby shower. Oh. So please ignore the powder blue theme. I'm decidedly not having a boy. <laughs> Telling you. Spin off. <laughs> Don't even have to have diamonds. Just click. You're done. <laughs> I told Sloan we didn't need such a rigid plan. We should just wing it. And I told Hayden that I certainly will not wing it. <laughs> if you can't tell, I don't host often. So I hope everything is okay. Hot dude. Sloan, everything is perfect. Those are all good choices, but I'm picking perfect. <laughs> really? I'm sort of just going through the motions of what I think a normal person would do. <laughs> <laughs> it, and it doesn't get better. It doesn't get better. I'm going to sit back for a second. You, you take that. You take all of those words right there. <laughs> yeah. 
Actually, that's what I'm doing at all times. And it's gotten me strangely far in life. <laughs> I think, I hear, yeah, I think you'd be surprised how many people are doing that very same thing. At least two. At least two. Ha, huh. okay, cool. I'm gonna grab us some Sangria Sloan made. It's a Halloween recipe, but it's delicious. You should probably stick to water, Hayden. You've been having that headache all afternoon. I'll be fine, Sloane. Do your hostess thing. Aiden disappears into the kitchen for a moment as Sloane sits down with you, producing a stack of cards. I've researched a number of light conversation topics for just this occasion. Mm -hmm. Shoot. What names do you like best for a brand new baby boy? <laughs> Sloan looks more closely at her cards. Oh, damn it! <laughs> Suddenly a noise sounds from across the room. Crash! That's, that's a noise. Yep. You look to find Hayden collapsed <gasps> on the floor, surrounded by shattered glass. No. Oh, dude! You rush over and cradle Hayden. She looks up at you, searching desperately, until her eyes flutter closed. Whoa. That's a baby. She could do that without even talking. She must be really in trouble. <laughs> Hayden! Get your heart out of you, Good job. There you go. There you go. Well done. Well done. <laughs> All right, people. Chapter 8 pretty soon. Thank you for listening. We'll see you in a bit.